Hello and welcome back to another video. In this one we are going to be going over the top 10 tips and tricks for Ark Survival Evolved on Fjordor. And with that let's just go ahead and get straight into the video. Coming in at number 10, the lasso. I think every Ark player has been there where you shoot down that perfect Quetzal and it lands right in the water. But what you probably didn't know is that you can make a lasso and pull the Quetzal out of the water. So let's go over how to do that now. All you're going to need is an Equus. Simply put a saddle on your Equus and then it's going to give you the option to craft a lasso. Next, go ahead and mount your Equus and you can go ahead and lasso the Quetzal and pull it out of the water. I don't know how many times I've left a Quetzal in the water because I literally didn't know that I could do this. And speaking of things I did not know I could do in Ark, coming in at number 9, Trudons hate fire. I probably put over 2,000 hours into Ark before I actually knew that you could do this. Trudons hate fire so much, you can actually chase them off. Simply keeping a torch in your hotbar at all times will prevent Trudons from ever messing with you again. Get out of here, you little devil! And while we're on the subject of keeping things on you, tip number 8, always carry a net gun with you. How many times have you been running through the redwoods or through the forest and all of a sudden something just boom, jumps out at you? That is why I always keep the net gun on me. I can just net it like this, check its level, and if it's good, I might tame it, or in this case, I'll just go ahead and kill it and keep running after what I was looking for. Number seven, use an otter for insulation when going to Jordanheim. When going to some of these snow areas, especially Jordanheim, you will literally freeze to death. So you have a couple of options. You can make a first set, but as you can see, it's so cold, I'm literally still dying. If you tame yourself an otter and put it on your shoulder, it will insulate you to the point where you stop freezing to death, even in Jordanheim. And as you can see right here, my health is actually going back up now. This is just a primitive fur suit, and so I don't have to craft anything special like Ascendant or Mastercraft fur sets in order for this to work. Which brings us to tip number six, how to change skins once you've applied them to armor. Now this one's pretty self-explanatory, but this is yet another one that I didn't know for a long time. I didn't realize that all you had to do was press the same button you pressed to pick up all items to be able to take your skin off of the armor set you put it on. So like this for example, I just took the skin off of one helmet and put it on a different one. That way let's say you have, I don't know, a helmet that's damaged or you make a better one and you want to put your favorite skin on that helmet, this is how you do it. And coming in at number 5 is how to teleport using the Fjordhawk. The Fjordhawk is one of those amazing little tames that they added to Ark on Fjordor. And one of the perks that it gives you is the ability to teleport across the map. The way it does this is basically when you die, the Fjordhawk is going to fly back to wherever you spawn and it's going to have your bag of loot with it. You don't have to go look for your body, you don't have to recover your inventory. The Fjordhawk is going to do that for you. Now what I use that for is basically a hack to teleport across the map. All you have to do is have some organic polymer with you, like this. Then go out and harvest a whole bunch of materials. Go ahead and cryo up my Maywing. And then simply eat some of the organic polymer. Now what's going to happen is you're going to die, you're going to pick a spot to respawn, and your Fjordhawk is going to be there with all of your loot. Essentially it lets you teleport and fast travel across the entire map anywhere you want to go or have a bed or a sleeping bag, and take your entire inventory with you. Number 4. You can put a torch on any saddle. That's right, you can equip a torch on any saddle in Ark. All you gotta do is put the torch inside of the inventory of your tame, and as long as there's a saddle, you'll be able to go ahead and put it in the saddle. Now they all kind of mount in different places, so it gives it a really cool look, and it's gonna light up the general area around you so you can see better at night. And from the tip earlier that we learned, Trudons do hate fire, so if you are in the dark, and you're going in the redwoods, make sure you put one of these on the saddle of your tame, and stop Trudons from dismounting you while you're looking through the woods. As an added bonus, when you're trying to light up your way and see through a dark cave, you can actually have one torch in your hand and one on your mount. Alright, tip number three, how to stack vaults. This is one of those essential skills to have when doing PvP. In order to accomplish this, simply lay out your row of vaults, and then when you're ready, go ahead and put up a thatch wall behind them. We're going to go up too high, and then we're going to put a thatch ceiling. Next, just put a row of thatch ceilings right above the row of vaults. Now here's the tricky part, you're going to want to go into orbital or whatever view is easiest for you to line things up, and then you're going to want to line up your next row of vaults right above your first one. Okay, last step is to break the wall, and it's going to drop the top vaults down onto the lower. You can repeat this step several times. 
Number two, how to make extraordinary kibble and how to do it early game. You will have to plant crops, but if you're on Fjordor, just go ahead and come to this location right here. There's gonna be a little farm that will have every single one of the crops that you need to make Lazarus chowder and extraordinary kibble. Next on the list, we're gonna to need to get mejo berries and fiber. I like to use the Onychus eggs because they're easy to grab early game, especially if you have a Maywing. You can just slide in, grab the egg, and take off. Okay, next on the list is gonna be honey. Now we just need to head to our base, get a cooking pot going, and we're gonna make Lazarus chowder. Just combine these ingredients right here, and we have our first Lazarus chowder. Go ahead and repeat that to make a bunch of those, and we're on to the final step. For this recipe, you need fiber, honey, one of the Dionychus eggs, then you're gonna need some mejo berries, and you're gonna need the Lazarus chowder, and last, water. Light the cooking pot, and you have one extraordinary kibble. You can use these to tame anything in the game. All right, here we are at tip number one, how to hide your loot inside of a stone foundation. This is one of those extremely useful tips for PvP, especially when you're early in the game. When I used to play official all the time, I would always go into a server, I would start gathering loot through drops and leveling up my character. Rather than building a big stone base to try to fortify my stuff, knowing it's gonna get broken into, I would just hide all my loot in the floor. Then I would simply put some stuff on top as dummy loot and unlock it. I'll put up a smithy, I'll put up a bunch of forges, I'll even put metal and tools and things of that nature in there so it's easy loot for them to grab and go. And if you really want to make this look good, you can put up some walls and then blow up your own walls to make it look like somebody blew a hole in the side of your base, they already went in, and they've already raided this base. As long as you give them no reason to blow up every single foundation, they're never going to find your loot. And that's it for this video. Do me a favor, if you found any of those helpful, give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more videos like this in the future.